this game has the potential to to lift us up out of our what what is this intro? This game has the potential to be amazing or, or awful because I see the Civ matchup and I see the map and I see the names of the players and I'm just like, yes, this is all the ingredients of a great Loey the Legend cast. Here in the red, we've got B Domes playing as the Incas, a civilization I love. I think you should try out. There's so many fun things to talk about. And then here in the teal, we have stock market hacker 1%. Uh, I don't know about the 1% there, but stock, hark, pfft, stock, <laughs> stock market hackers, say that three times fast, is you're playing as the Byzantines, also a civilization you can, should consider trying for a variety of different reasons. I would say that this is like the, the Civ matchup of options. Incas, they could do so many things. It's same with Byzantines, so I'm very excited to talk about it. Uh, the map is hideout where you start with palisade walls, so a bit of protection. Some people take that protection too seriously and then get rushed, which is still possible. Other people decide to beef up their walls and take it late. Uh, I don't know anything about these players, but with almost 100 videos or maybe over 100 videos by now in the Loey the Legends playlist on YouTube, and then considering I've been doing it virtually every Tuesday since, well, like two and a half years ago, I'm going to say it. I don't know if this is true, but I don't know if I've ever seen Incas versus Byzantines ever in low elo. I've seen both the sieves. I don't know if I've ever seen them clash. Anyways, I am, uh, I'm excited. So let's talk about uh, the options for Incas. So first off, I should mention that they do actually get an eco bonus. Um, and they get an eco bonus unlike the Byzantines. So they get a free llama at the start. Woo! <laughs> It's like one of the silliest eco bonuses ever. But if you're a big fan of llamas, maybe the cutest. I don't know. It's funny to compare it to like, uh, you know, even laster longing sheep uh, or eating sheep faster or free farm upgrades or resources lasting 10% longer. I'm just going down the list of all these eco bonuses. I feel like the free llama is like at the bottom of the eco bonus list. But it is something. I also think they have a team bonus where their farms build slightly faster, which is also just, like, not great. Uh, but it's an eco bonus. Their houses give them 10 plus 10 population space. So if you're someone who gets pop-capped a lot and gets housed a lot, you should maybe consider Incas. Their stone buildings are discounted, so they can make towers, TCs, castles at a cheaper cost, which is quite nice. And they pretty much have the tools to counter every unit that could be thrown at them. Uh, if the opponent wants to go for lots of horsemen, they have really good monks. They have really good uh, halb line, like pikeman line, and they have a unique unit in the Kamiok. Um, if the opponent goes for archers, they've got elite eagle warriors, which is infantry, and a counter to archers. They also then have fully upgraded skirmishers, which is an option. If the opponent goes infantry, they have arbalest. They have their own champions. They also have slingers, which is a unique unit out of their archer range. Um... And they've got decent siege, too. They don't get Bomber Cannon, but they do get Siege Ram, which I think is always a must if you lack something like Bomber Cannon. And so overall, I mean, Incas are pretty solid. Over here for Byzantines, it's not so much about what you make. is it how cheap it is. Uh, they have very cheap counter units. They have cheap skirmishers, and they have cheap halberdiers. The problem there is you're up against a civilization which cannot even make horsemen, so the halberdiers won't be too effective. Skirmishers will. And I think with that all that said, you know, you might start to worry a little bit for Byzantines because you're like, whoa, like their cheap halbs don't even matter here. What on earth do they do? Well, their unique unit. The cataphract is incredibly strong against everything I mentioned from the Incas, except for maybe the Arbalest. But that's why you have skirmishers. So I have no freaking clue what we're gonna see here. I can see that B Domes has uh, kind of scouted the corner. And now as the Eagle has come back. So I think this is Auto Eagle. I think this is Auto Scout. And I also see that B Domes has no interest in taking boars, which to me is rather concerning because boars are always important for your economy in the early stages, especially before you take gold. Um, and that's something that Teal seems to have down. I wasn't looking at stock market hackers eco too much during my little spiel there. But stock market looking pretty good and also sending a villager this way for some reason. Is this a sneak villager, perhaps? It looks like the scout has come to accompany this vill? I don't know. 
thing about cataphracts though is they're incredibly expensive you can only produce amount of castles you need to get upgrades but yeah it's definitely one of those units that if you make enough of it is going to dominate this villager does not have loom so i'm curious what happens it looks like he used guard if he used follow i don't think the scout will automatically fight the bet <laughs> whoa wait what the scout's blocking the pathing of the bear oh and he notices it wow okay so we have a very unique strategy here, folks. This is going to be a sneak villager, maybe for a bit of a rush strategy from Stark Market Hacker. But, you know, Loom was in, so the villager wouldn't have lost the 1v1 battle anyways. And we had the bear block, and now we have the scouts going to hit the bear before the bear even gets a hit on the villager. That's impressive. Okay, now guys, if you're ever going to be sneaky, like, they're not expecting you to have anything over here, which is... It gives you a lot of opportunity, right? If you're ever going to be sneaky, though, how about you don't build buildings right next to their walls? <laughs> I mean, Byzantines get free Town Watch and Feudal, which will give you a lot of vision on the outpost. But I, d I don't know if I agree with the whole let's make an outpost right next to his walls strategy. I guess it is going to be hard for a low edel player to notice that. And I'm saying that as an experienced player, so I, I would notice that, but... Okay, now the villager's just like... It's like he saw the enemy and he was like, Oh, this is scary and it's going to run home now. And maybe it's just for vision. I don't know. Um, the barracks is being built at home for Teal. So this is not going to be an offensive push with the barracks. Can you imagine getting the orders from your boss to do this, though? He's like, yeah, um, I need you to walk into the enemy base... We've heard, we've heard about the Incas. The Incas can do tons of horrible things to us. So this is what I need from you. I need you to go to the enemy base and I need you to make an outpost right where they can see it. And he's going to be like, uh, how much am I getting paid for this? Nothing. You are essentially a slave, but just do it. Trust me. I'll bring my best warrior to protect you. He's like, all right, fine. He's a bit of a pushover. We all have those friends who just go along with everything. They don't have a backbone, right? So he shows up to the gate, and then the best warrior is a scout. He's like, okay. But then he was kind of okay with it because the bear was killed. You know, he's like, okay, defended me. This is cool. And he's out there, and it's sunny. He's got no shirt on. Suntan lotion doesn't exist. He is ripped, though. So I, honestly, I wouldn't have a shirt on either. I would flaunt that. But yeah, anyways, that's the story of that dude. Uh, we're going to name him uh, Craig. I think Craig is a, a really good name we haven't used before. And um, I wish I could hotkey Craig. I don't know if I can do that. But let's see. Craig is now going to... Is Craig going to make outposts on the other side now? <laughs> is he going to... Is the whole idea just to get vision? I mean, I don't hate the vision aspect. It's just... <laughs> I wasn't expecting this much commitment. <laughs> okay, so he's walking to the other side. Meanwhile, in uh, Stock Market Hacker's base, we do have... A variety of military buildings. And over Red's base, who did take the boars. I didn't say the words. I'm sure you saw it. Red's now making an archery range. And these villagers seem very panicked. It's like they saw the outpost and are worried. Yeah, I, I wouldn't suggest you make the outpost next to a wood line like this. Because you don't get as much coverage. Because you don't need to see trees. You want to place the outpost here and here. Uh, like towards the middle. So that's a little weird. But the thought process from Teal, I do like. Like, I, I know that the the one villager walking around the whole map thing is a little crazy. But Teal's economy is... Okay, actually, it's really bad. Really imbalanced. We don't have wood or farm upgrade, and we're about to see a bunch of farms. But anyways, the thought process of outposting, I don't hate. So this is, this is actually a really good thing to do. Outposts are really underrated uh, building. And with a few tweaks, it looks even better for Teal. Now, what's good for the Byzantine players, you also get Town Patrol for freeing Castle. So when Teal makes it to Castle Age, these outposts, which are kind of misplaced, will actually give you a lot more vision. Informed stock manipulation. Yeah, basically. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And now this guy's going to go... Um, he's going to go mine gold, I guess. Lots of farms for Teal. Way more farms than I was expecting to see here. So I like how Teal noticed, oh, I have 20-some on wood. And what don't I have? Oh, I don't have food. 
But let's pull the villagers off of wooden farm. That's perfect. I like that. Red, um... Maybe we'll make it to Castle Age faster here? Definitely seems a teensy bit paranoid. And this auto eagle has been around and will have scouted those outposts. But I don't think Red is looking at the mini-map or the eagle at all. I think Red is just looking here. T90, you don't understand. They don't have small trees mod, so the outposts are a bit hidden. Yo, wait a second. How could I be so disconnected? You're right, though. What does it look like without small trees? Ooh. Ooh, it's hidden in the darkness. Yeah. Well, okay, this one isn't. These trees actually look amazing. I'm actually going to keep small trees off for the time being. Wow. Okay, I think, I think that's got to be at least part of it. I don't think it's still a good idea. Like... If they attack your outpost, your outpost is still showing you what they're making. I still would suggest you make your outpost in the middle. But anyways, I, I can see what you're saying now. It is definitely harder to see this. But Wes, thanks. He says, thanks for the great content. First time catching you live. Hope I have a great team. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there's no... Uh, it's very hot right now. I am sweating as I cast because um, our air conditioning is broken. And that is going to be addressed tomorrow. Um, hopefully. Anyways, we have someone coming out. So that's, that's fun. But if I stop telling myself that that's the case, I'll just get too engrossed into the game where I can't even worry about that. Okay, so Red's going to be in Castle at around the same time. I mentioned earlier that Incas can make very, very cheap castles. I think it's like 520 stone as opposed to 650. I don't actually remember the exact amount. I think it's like 15% off. Does anyone remember the exact numbers? I forget. Anyways, I know it's cheaper. The amount of times I've like tried to place a castle when it's 510, though, and it doesn't work, and I'm like, okay, I guess we have to wait, but I don't know how long we have to wait. It's just way too high. Way too high. Here's red. Uh, going to make a gate here. I like it. I mean, this is the type of thing you want to do on hideout, guys. You want to wall up. Take map control, secure resources, take it late, usually. I don't like this, though. I don't love that. I, I don't hate it. So I think it's maybe better than no wall, but I don't love it. I would have preferred to see the walling between the wood lines here. Kind of similar to what you're seeing on this side. Now, of course, the Byzantine player will see this. And I mentioned earlier with free town patrol, you get a lot more vision from the outpost. So it actually shows the double barracks here. And we are going to see the second TC here for Stark Market Hacker. Um, Star I can't say that. Stock Market Hacker. Okay, let me say that three times fast real quick for content. Stock Market Hacker, Stock Market Hacker, Stock Market It's It's not that bad. That was near flawless. Um. Yeah, okay, so now Teal is going to boom. And Domes is going to build the second town center off screen here. Like way down here on that extra gold. I think there's logic to either uh, decision. I think that in Red's case, Red is trying to secure resources that are not seen as uh, under their control currently. So I, I get the logic there. At the same time, like investing into a second town center at the very least within your base, I think makes sense. Because Teal's already off to a faster start with it, right? You build the TC with more vills, send them all the wood, you then farm like crazy. I like this. But I also don't like the fact that Teal doesn't have Horse Collar. A lot of these farms are going to start expiring much faster than they really should. And oh my goodness. Wow, okay, so we've got TCs everywhere for Red. So in theory, Red's going to catch up with the Villager Count. Um, Red is now making a castle here to protect this. I kind of... I, I like how this game is played out. I feel like both players have slightly different approaches in terms of how they want to do things. Now, Teal Scout is uh, is trapped behind enemy lines. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But it's trapped behind here, and we'll actually be able to find those town centers. And I guess use a raven to send the information back. I don't know how that works exactly in Age of Empires 2. There's no reporting back that needs to be done. <laughs> but th this, to me, looks like it's going to go late, and it keeps bringing me back to, will the Byzantine player go Cataphracts? Right now, the Byzantine player is going to make some knights. 
Knights probably one of the stronger units you can have in terms of their stats and what they give to you before you start talking upgrades and counters and economy. Two Knights is much stronger than pretty much anything else. Easier to get to as well. Look at that from TOD. <laughs> you see him just toying around here with red? That's funny. That was intentional too. We forgot to produce out of both town centers throughout that, but did look fancy. I'll give Teal that. I don't love the two town center decision on a, in a game where the opponent stonewalled. I feel like you should have like three or four. Let's get as big of an economy as possible. 120, 130 villagers. That way you can fill that 70 population space after those vills with, the, with fully upgraded units. If you want to delete villagers later on, you can play that game too. But look, look at the scout. Now, the scout got hit by the TC. Inca villagers are also affected by um, infantry blacksmith upgrades. So there's actually no way this scout would be able to do it. But the distraction's hilarious here. You don't normally see this at 700 elo. I, I feel like the ideal fight for us is Cataphract versus Kameyuk. I think if it's upwards of 30 Cataphracts with all the upgrades, like Logistica, which gives them trample damage, and Elite Cataphract, and of course the Blacksmith upgrades, I'm pretty sure the Cataphracts wreck. But if you think of the cost, Kameyoks, I think, are extremely underrated. And they also train faster. And the castles are cheaper for, in for Incas. So I do think as well, we've got the scout. He's like, hey guys, come on in. This is going to force some type of reaction here, you'd think. But anyways, I do feel like mass Kameyoks could do pretty well against Cataphract. But Teal actually has the villager lead, guys, despite only having two TCs. And Teal has just kept them producing, as you can see in the idle TC area. I think part of the problem for Red, too, is like, you expand your TCs all over the map, you've got to have a lot more skill to bounce around. These villagers have been idle for a while. And that's just an example. Red, however, is going to drop a castle back here. Just so casual about it. <laughs> like, oh, sire, the enemy is knocking on our footsteps. Oh, what should we do? We should casually build a castle. And hope we don't mistime it. Okay, two villagers. Sorry, that's not so casual anymore. I don't know if Red realizes that Kameyooks are like beefy pikemen that can also do damage to other things too. Like, I saw the pikemen upgrade clicked. It makes me think that maybe we're going to see pikes instead of Kameyooks, which makes me a little sad. Oh, guys, Red is repairing the gate. What a play. That's actually really sick. Look at that. And now there's a chance that the gate opens when you do this. So I was checking to see if Red locked it. <gasps> oh, you idiot. <laughs> Not Red, but the villager. Oh. Oh, geez. What a betrayal that was. Yeah, like, if you see this square, that is what opens the gate. You see how Teal's attacking? It's it's weird, but that's the hitbox for the gate, right? I like how Teal broke in here, and this could easily be seen as an opportunity to continue to fight. And now they immediately want to go home. They're like, oh, yeah, we didn't mean that. We're just kidding. Can we leave now? Dude! I mean, okay, there is going to be a castle back here. The enemy is training military. Yes, it's a scary time to be alive. <laughs> but, like, that was such a good... Like, you, you want to capitalize on that, right? You want to run in. You want to do more. And now he just wants to leave. Maybe he never wanted to come in here in the first place. Maybe he just didn't like the gate being there. But we're thinking about it like, like we're not low elo here. I mean, maybe he just didn't like it. He wants to be able to come and go when he pleases. And that's the main thing about it. Okay, so we've got the knights running away. Now, good reaction from Teal. I was fully expecting him to just lose these things. Now, let's check the town centers. Producing, not producing, not producing, not producing. Teal, not producing, not producing. Okay, so, wow, holy gold. Yeah, both players are, like, full-on micro mode right now. And Teal's now bringing in archers. By the way, Teal has zero blacksmith upgrades, which is not going to do too well. And so, Teal really wants to save these knights. I don't think it's going to be possible. So he's try is hoping the archers will kill the Kameyooks and then the knights can continue to attack. But the archers have so little range because of no blacksmith upgrades. So honestly, Teal, click these to the corner and cut your losses. That would be, <laughs> that would be my tip. Also, the Kameyooks, let's look at their pierce armor after this upgrade. It's still not that great. 
But they're taking one damage a hit because of no blacksmith upgrades. Teal seems to know about the university, but oh my goodness. Yeah, these cameos are going to mop up. And now Teal's like, oh, maybe I can escape with my knights. <laughs> okay, this is so funny. Let's see if Teal makes it out of here. <laughs> now get out of here with your archers, dude. You don't have upgrades. <laughs> These archers are probably like, why do we have to save the knights? They didn't even they didn't even do anything for us. Okay, the knights make it through only to die anyways. This bear is hungry and he doesn't care on what side of the gate he's on. He just wants a meal. I imagine this is repair. Yeah, this is repair villagers. And now more knights arrive. The bear is now gonna try and attack the archers. Red I think has better eco in terms of the eco upgrades. You have to factor that in, and I, Red's also getting blacksmith upgrades. Teal is worrying me because there's no blacksmith upgrades. And the cameos are just going to continue to own. The bear, by the way, is hungry and continuing to, to munch down on this archer. Teal has really good unit control. So if Teal would just get upgrades, I actually have a lot of faith in Teal. Like, Teal's micro is actually not bad. And oh god, we've seen this before. The knights... They're actually going to chase down the skirms. No, no, no. The knights need to get out of the freaking gate. What is up with the focus on this one gate? If this, guys, you might be thinking, wow, Red is a master strategist because he's going cameo. No, he's a master strategist because he keeps repairing the gate. Because the longer the gate's here, the longer the teal won't get any blacksmith upgrades. That's the way I see it. Like, the blacksmith is there. But Teal will not focus on anything else. Won't go up to Imperial Age. Won't stop making archers. Teal just will not stop unless this gate is down. Now, it would crack me up if he finishes the gate here, which he's about to, and then goes up to Imp. That would just crack me up. He's like, okay, job is done. Oh, now he gets a blacksmith upgrade. Did I call it or did I call it? Holy crap. The second the gate's down... It's like a, uh, I'm really bad with video games. It's like a, it's like a task-oriented video game where it's like, first, you must take out the gate. Then you can move on to the next task. That's exactly how Teal's playing this crap. Holy crap. Okay, and we're going to have, well, now we have Fletching at least, which is good. Problem is there's a lead skirm, so this is still not good. Run away, run away. Oh, God, this KD is just killing me here. There's also, it feels like, I don't know, Teal just really wants to fight. Teal's a fighter, not a lover, that's for sure. And Teal's not going to be loving this fight. Imp is on me in for red. Teal's tossing away units left and right. Teal's unit composition is really good. You have the range units behind. You have Kamiok's in front. And uh, my biggest concern for Teal now is that there is no stone income. Um, zero stone income. Never thought about dropping a castle. Never felt like that would be important for protection. Probably won't get the cameos at this rate. Continues to lose archers and just says, hey, I think I need more archers. Something's wrong here. I need more. And so he's just making more of them. Uh, very focused. Very focused on the fights. And not so much the blacksmith upgrades. Now we're going to have the attack and the armor. The thing is, though, if those upgrades were in earlier, there would have genuinely been some big problems for red. A great job from Red. Look at Red. We got some production buildings behind. I like how Red is playing this. It's just making life a little easier. Also, I don't know why Capture Age... Oh, it's showing Monk with Relic and then also showing Monk without Relic. I see. Great job from Red. B-Dome's looking good right now. Hasn't had the Villager lead, but has, I think, brought in more resources just simply due to the eco upgrades that were researched as well. And you can kind of see how close it is with the food, but with everything else looking good. And uh, still no crossbowmen, by the way. These are still few lage archers. And Teal's like, you know what? I think we need more. It is cheaper to go to the Imperial Age with the Byzantines. Are we seeing Imperial Age? Nope. No imp. There's lots of archers and knights. If there's ever a time to take a fight, this would be it for Teal, though. Because Teal's got fully armored knights now. And Red's about to drop a very important castle here. And Red has now said, I will not make any more gates. We shall not pass. Okay, never mind. There's a gate. I think we all know that Teal will call the GG after the gate goes up. Because that... that At this point, how can you come back, right? Enemy gates it again? 
after you put in that much effort to stop them from gating the first time? Just no. I guess the only thing that's keeping Teal in the game is that there's no longer an outpost there, so Teal can't see the gate. Teal does a great job at queuing units. Um, 38 archers in queue. The archer number on the field has gone down. The archer number in the queue has gone up. Does struggle, it seems, to know that there's an upgrade in that building. Uh, however, this is a really good fight because the knights have armor. It's still just going to suck once the cameos get fully upgraded. You got the castle fire, which is kind of helping red as well. Red does lose those villagers. Red is still behind in villagers. And red, you just need to chill for a second. Just, just take a deep breath and wait until you have a massive cameo. Just wait. Fabric shields will give these things extra armor. And then you've got four castles in total. Yeah, four castles in total to produce cameo. Just make cameo. The archers were never really going to be that terrifying of a unit in the first place. Uh, there's actually no reason to make slingers here, by the way. Slingers are a good unit, but only against infantry. But yeah, just back up, Red. Mass more cameos and ease your way towards victory. Teal got a little excited there, ran into the castle fire. It hasn't been pretty, but Teal is on the way to the Imperial Age. Has also clicked the crossbow upgrade. And we should mention that cameos don't have the highest pierce armor ever. And Red is still stuck on just uh, Castle Age upgrades on the Skirms. Now, anytime I see someone's got three relics on Hideout, it's also faster to Imp and faster to Castle Spots. Anytime I... What the... Where did they come from? Anytime I see those things, I think that th that player is going to have the edge in the long run. Um, you know, Especially when you talk about gold positions too, like Teal is going to really have to push... To get advantage to some of these gold positions. This is also something red can take. But if you get Arbalest with full upgrades here, drop a castle, make some trebs, make some sea drams, make some bomber cans. I think it's actually doable for teal still. Don't ask me how. That's it's crazy thought that it's doable, but I think it is. Now, I don't know if red is trying this, but red consistently is luring teal into the castle. We know Teal likes to micro, right? So I actually have faith that Teal could get to Arbalest and maybe Red wouldn't have the skirm numbers. Red, however, thinking about this, as one should, great job. Getting Bracer now, that will be in soon. That's enough to push most of this away. Adding more ranges for probably more skirmishers, which is also great. Teal wants to take a fight. Red backs away. Man, these guys actually have really solid micro. Is anyone else impressed? For 700 elo... We've definitely seen the 700 ELO with some of the things that they've done. But this is a good game. Not all the eco upgrades have come in, but not all the blacksmith upgrades have come in. We've got different unit compositions. But I, time is of the essence here, too. You need to click your upgrades. Okay, so we have Bracer. But Arbalest is a must here. And that costs, that costs gold, which is something that Teal doesn't really have a lot of right now. I don't know what happened here, but this gold isn't being mined anymore, and then this gold is almost finished, so. A town center is currently kill being killed by crossbows. I think we all knew that this is exactly what was going to happen at this stage of the game. None of us are surprised. None of us are shocked. It's just, it's just the meta, right? This is the meta. Red not happy about it. Red, I think, going to drop a castle here. Red does have more skirmishers in queue. And you could tell there's a lack of confidence for Red because that castle is awfully close to this castle. But I still think with Incas, it's a good one. You've got lots on the, in the bank anyways. And it, what it does is it forces Teal to engage. And as Teal engages, Castle Fire will help out. And then the skirmishers are going to be there for the crossbows, not the Arbalest. And I've been feeling for a while now that Teal is going to realize there's nothing I can do anymore. Think about all the gold that was lost with all the knights and all the archers and the lack of upgrades. And as it's, as we sit here now, I mean, red is only at 66 villagers, but has plenty of resources. And I think has more access to resources in the long run as well, which is an important thing to bring up. These villagers going ham on the stone. I would love there to be a comeback for Teal. 
Like, I'd love to see Teal cut through the middle or something. How crazy would that be? We don't see that enough. Look at that. Can you imagine how sick that would be? Onager cutting through the middle? The red basically was like, oh, okay, so you're going to go full archers? That's cute. I have your counter now in skirm. And so you want to cover your bases in red's position. You need to think, okay, what can they do to kill my unit? And then you need to have something that accompanies that. And Red already has that in the cameo. So if, if Hussar comes in, or Light Cav or whatever, that's not actually that big a deal here. Because the cameos are going to be there. Whew. I mean, Teal's far from finished, right? We're going to have stables built. Upgrades coming in. I think Byzantines get Hussar, but I actually forget. They do lack bloodlines, so it does make them... It's not the best Hussars, so let's put it that way. I really think Teal had mistimed things with uh, the stone collection this game. I feel like a castle earlier in the game would have helped, and yeah, Teal decides to go back to the stock market, stock market and hack, and calls the GG, and that, like... Honestly, I want to say props to Red for keeping it together, because Teal's army movement and production really would overwhelm some people, despite the no upgrade thing. Like, that was really well done from Red. I like how Red Wall decides. Like, there were no worries here. Red could then have more time against that army to prep for it at the gate. But, like, Teal, Teal is not way worse than Red. Teal just needed to do a few things differently. Get a few more upgrades, and you're fine. Like, honestly, get a few more upgrades, you're fine. Go to Stone a bit earlier, you're okay. Also... Gates are not that terrifying. They're, they're really not that bad. You have the outpost there. They have the gate. That's cool. But, uh, you know, focus on some of the other things before you focus on the gate. Because clearly, if the gate is in your mind, there's nothing else that you can focus on here. Stock market hacker. And uh, it was a funny one. <laughs> like, this was, I guess it wasn't the closest game at the end of the day. Uh, at least right now, it doesn't look like it was super close. Most of it was a bit closer. But man, the freaking... <laughs> the gate situation had me rolling. I can't actually roll because then you wouldn't be able to hear me. But you know what I mean. Uh, there's the eco difference. Props to B-Domes. B-Domes also, I think, had a much better outlook on what his Civ does. And what confirmed that for me was when he got Fabric Shields, which is a unique tech. There's a lot of people who don't know their unique techs. So to get that one with the cameo was... It just tells me that B-Domes knows the Incas. I didn't see a lot there from Stock Market Hacker, which told me that Stock Market Hacker knows the Byzantines. So what we could actually do, if you guys are curious, is I'll just quickly take a look at their profiles. I want to see if they're one-tricking these sieves or not. Okay, so we've got B-Domes. B-Domes has played Incas the last three games. So, not that crazy, right? But probably said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play Incas, and we're going to learn Incas, and then we'll move along. So, good job there. I like that outlook. You know, instead of playing the same set all the time, you just test it out every now and then. I'm looking at Stock Market Hacker, and this is actually really worrying. Stock Market Hacker has played Byzantines the last week and has probably played, like, 40 games in that week. <laughs> so... Well, guys, what I was expecting was to be like, well, uh, Stock Market Hacker, he uh, he doesn't play Byzantines. He doesn't know Byzantines. And because he doesn't know Byzantines, he didn't know about the cheaper imp. He didn't know about the this and the cataphracts and the that. Yeah, uh, he plays the Civ a lot. So maybe he plays the Civ a lot for other reasons. Maybe he likes the vision from the outpost, which we saw. Uh, maybe he realizes that his gates will have more HP. And, you know, everyone learns at a different pace. I think Teal can make it happen. It was still really good economic execution overall. And with a few more upgrades, it would have been a different game. Oh, man. 89.9% of exploration on both sides of things. Just top-tier quality scouting. What a close game.